Hello and welcome to lesson two of the Twilight Dreaming Quilt. This week we're going to continue on with the same applique and quilting that we did last week, but we're going to add a crazy patchwork moon with a bias edge onto it. So to get started, just follow on from what we did last week where we traced our applique design onto the background fabric first, it's our 18 inch square, and then you trace the pieces onto fusible web, iron them onto the fabrics, cut them out, and then ironed the applique shapes to the background. So let's get started. So we've got our applique shapes fused onto our background square. And so I suggest stitching around the edge of them just the same way that you did last week um, in last lesson before we do the crazy patchwork. And there's just one thing I want to talk about and that's using a tear away or stabilizer underneath your work when you're doing your stitching around the edge of your shapes. So somebody did mention that and I thought I'd just talk a bit about it this week. So tear away. This is tear away, it's a medium weight tear away. Some of you might have all sorts of um, products in your stash and you're not sure what they are. Well, you'll know that it's tear away because tear away is the one that actually tears in both or any direction. And it really is optional if you want to put that underneath your work while you're stitching. It just holds a little firmer and then when you're finished, then you turn it over and you remove it away from all of the stitches. Okay, so now we're going to start on the crazy patchwork. So to do the crazy patchwork, you're going to need a couple of things. So one of them is um, some template plastic and you're only going to need a small piece and we're going to cut that from the large sheet that was in the requirements list. And I'm just going to digress and tell you why we needed that large sheet. So with our blocks, as you can see underneath here, they're all 18 inches to begin with. Once we've finished the quilting, we're going to trim them up to 17 inches before we join them together. So if you have a large piece of template plastic like this, what I want you to do is to, with your ruler and using um, straight edge, just measure 17 inches and make a mark there. And then we want half of 17 inches, which is eight and a half inches. So just come along and there's your eight and a half, mark your line slide it down eight and a half mark the line and just draw that shape up I then want you to cut that out and the reason for that is when we do trim and we're not going to start trimming just yet but when we do trim you'll easily then be able to find the center of your block and you'll be able to use this to mark the 17 inches and you'll just be able to mark that flip it over on your center 
and then mark that and then you'll be able to trim it to size and that's just a really easy trick to trimming your blocks to, so that, to make sure that they're all the same size. So we're going to put that away for a while and then we're left with um, this piece of template plastic here. So we're going to use just a small piece for our crazy patchwork centre and we're going to use this further on down the track. So you're also going to need a square of cotton fabric, so about 10 inches or 25 centimetres. It's just something from your stash, um, you don't have to go buy anything special for this one here. It even can be a little bit patterned, it can be a light colour, so try and keep it light, just something that you want to be able to see through. Um, if you can't, that's okay because you can use a light box, so just wait and see what I do with that before you make the decision on what fabric you're going to use for that. Then we're going to need our strips, so they're an inch and a quarter wide, and I did say with a minimum length of 25 or um, 10 inches, and we're cutting them down the selvage um, in the same direction as the selvage, so down the grain in the same direction as the selvage. If you bought fabrics and you bought 25 centimetre pieces, I don't want you to go and cut an inch and a quarter strip, which is like the full width of the fabric, because you're not really going to need that. So we're just going to cut them you know, in the same direction as the selvage. So to cut your strip, what you would do is just place it on the board and just like that, I've actually already cut a selvage off here, but if you haven't cut your selvage off, what you can do is just place it on your board. You've got a straight edge running there and you've got your selvage running along that way there. And then you would just take your ruler and you would just line up some lines there. I can't really see what I'm doing here. There we go, there and there. And then you would just cut along there. Okay, so I'm going to just cut the selvage off. Let's pretend that's a selvage, so we're cutting that off. And then we want inch and a quarter strips. So if you like to use your board for the lines to cut, this um, actual board here doesn't have inch and a quarter markings on it. So I'm just gonna flip it over this way here like that. And then I'm just going to, with my ruler, there's my one inch and there's my quarter. And I'll just cut that like that. Say for instance you're using fabrics from your stash, um, just cut strips. Um, if you've got like an irregular kind of shaped scrappy square or piece, just cut a strip from like the shortest edge so that's all you're going to need. But just start with um, 10. If you feel like you need to come back and cut some more then you can cut some more as we're going along. Okay, so what we're going to do, first thing we're going to trace the, um, the Crazy Patchwork Centre, which is on our pattern sheet. And so just tracing that with a lead pencil around the edge. Like this. And you'll notice that I have got them numbered. And the other thing is we want um, the right side of this facing up. So um, I'm just going to mark a little R there so I know that that is the right side. I'm also going to make a number one there so I know that's the number one edge and I'll probably just make a little two there so I know that's two. That's just giving us the order in which we're going to be sewing. Next step is we're going to cut this out. So just using your paper scissors we're just going to cut our little centre shape out. You don't need to add any seam allowance onto this. I've already allowed some seam allowance there. Okay, so that's that piece. Choose a fabric that you want to be the center. I'm going to use this darker one here because it's going to stand out a little bit more as we're sewing. And then we're just going to mark that onto the right side of the fabric. So with the right side facing up, pop that onto the right side of your fabric. And then just using a color that's going to stand out for you there to mark it. So I'm just marking around the edge. And that's the thing about Crazy Patchwork, you just start with um, an irregular either five edge or seven edge shape to go in the center. And now our next step is we're just going to cut that out. So you can just cut that out with your scissors. So that's our centre shape. Now the next step from there is we're going to trace our 
our crazy patchwork base, that's what we're going to call this. And with this here, you can either trace it with um, a lead pencil or your um, ceramic marker. So we're going to, first of all, trace out the outline circle and mark that quite heavily. And if you can't see through your fabric, just use your light box and we've been getting some great tips on the Facebook page and I really love the one about the um, the app on the iPad which is a light box I thought that was absolutely fantastic and we're loving seeing everybody's block ones that they've made they're absolutely beautiful makes us so happy to see those box next thing we want to do is we're just going to trace in where our center shape goes like that And just mark, if you want now at this point in time, you can mark all your numbers going around the edge. One, two, three. I'm kind of writing upside down, but as long as I know where my one and my two is, I'll be fine from there. And then the next step is onto the wrong side here. I can just see my circle there. So I'm just going to trace my circle onto the wrong side. You might be wondering why I'm doing this, but um, all will be revealed once we start sewing. Try and trace a little bit neater than me. I'm doing this in a little bit of a hurry just to demonstrate. Okay. Now from there, we're going to take our crazy patchwork piece and we're going to position that on with the right side facing up, just as we had it marked in the center. Okay, so from now we're going to go over to the sewing machine and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna sew our crazy patchwork using our strips. So at the sewing machine, you're going to need to have, just say like a gray or neutral colored thread. I've got my quarter inch foot on, I'm set for straight stitch, but with small stitch length of two. And I've got some sharp scissors for cutting fabric. I've got an unpicker. And the other thing I've done is I've put my 10 fabrics in an order. So um, I'm using like a pink and red and orange combination here. So I've got a mixture of alternating between lights and darks. But basically what you want to do is um, just make sure that every fabric is kind of like contrasting next to its neighbor. Okay, so let's get started with this. Okay, so I'm going to take my first strip and I'm going to put it along edge number one like that. And one thing to remember is that you only want to sew the length of the underneath shape edge. So we don't want to sew too far. And we're not doing a little reverse stitch or back tack at the beginning or at the end. So if you don't have a quarter inch foot, just use your ordinary foot and just try to take a little bit less um, of a seam allowance than like the edge of the foot. So just try and judge a quarter inch. So we're stitching along. That's about the length of my underneath shape. I'm going to cut there. And then I'm going to flip over like that. I'm not going to cut this strip just yet. Just give it a little finger press. And then I'm going on to my next edge, which is number two. And I'm going to take my next strip. And this time I'm working on this next edge. And I'm going to take my piece and I'm going to put it along that edge. But I'm going to bring it up just a little bit above my first strip of fabric there. So that does that make sense? So there's my next edge. I'm putting my strip on along that edge. So that's edge number two, bringing it up a little bit higher of the, um, my yellow strip there. Okay, so I'm sewing along and I'm going to stop sewing. I'm kind of guessing where the shape edge, well, the edge number two finishes. Now, just before I flip this strip over, I'm just gonna get my scissors in there I'm just going to cut away my first strip. So I'll pop that down there and then I'm going to flip this one over like that. Just give it a finger press or if you've got your iron you can be using your iron as you go. Okay so now I'm going to go on to edge three and I'm going to get my next piece and there's edge three there and I'm going to put my next piece on along edge three but extending it so it's going across my second strip there. Popping my foot down, stitching along and finishing, just kind of guesstimating where the end of edge three is. 
once again, I'm going to get my scissors. I'm going to trim like that. Make sure you try and trim level just in case if you have a light fabric and you've got a dark fabric there, when you flip that over, you could end up having a little bit of a shadow there. Put my thread away there. Just ignore that little stitching line I did there. That was when I was testing my tension. Okay, so now we're going on to our next stitch. So we've done one, two, three. We're going to do four now. So taking my next strip, running it along edge four, extending it up, just a little bit up into the yellow piece there. Foot down, stitching along, stopping somewhere on the edge of um, edge four, making sure we're not doing a little reverse stitch at the beginning or at the end. Cutting my piece and then flipping over like that. So you can see we're already already starting to get some crazy patchwork. And the other thing is you'll know that not everybody's crazy patchwork is going to end up the same. They're all going to be completely different. Okay, so we're on to our next one. So we're one, two, three, four, edge five. So we can't really see much of edge five, but we know where it is there. And we're going to take our strip and we're going to run it up along there. Actually, that's the same color. I'm just going to take a different color strip. There we are. So along edge five, extending it up into my strip there that I just sewed and stitching along. Stopping, guessing where the edge of um, number five edge is. And then I'm going to cut and then I'm going to flip like that. So I've got two more edges to go and then I've finished stitching around the shape. So my next piece is going to be a different strip again. Running it along edge number six, extending it up into the strip that I just sewed on and stitching. trimming and flipping that out like that and now my last edge you can just see it and it is there so we are going to be stitching something along that so as I said even though we can't see it it's there and we are going to use that edge so we're going to take my last piece here another different yellow color and I can see where that edge is I'm just going to kind of guesstimate there. So what's going to happen with this one, I'm going to stitch it all the way across this strip here and I'm going to bring it all the way along now. And I'll finish sewing at the end of that strip. And then this time I'm going to trim away the red piece there and then I'm actually going to trim away any of these excess pieces here. This is where you will need your unpicker so just come along just unpick those strips back a little bit turn that around so that you can see that a little bit better so I'm just unpicking there like that Maybe back a little bit more and cutting along there like that and then I'm going to flip that strip over and we still did get a tiny little piece there and that's good, that's what we want. So as we start working around again, we want to be sticking to the seven different edges and the way we're going to do that is I'm going to take my next piece and there's my edge number one in there, that's that tiny little one. So when I take this strip, I'm going to have one edge here, so the left side's just going to run level with that, just so I know, okay, I am kind of going in that direction. But the thing we want to do now, we don't want to keep sewing everything on so we've got strips that are all the same. We're now going to take it and put it yeah, maybe in a little bit of a different angle like that. And this is what's going to give us all the different shapes. So the only reason why I got you to cut inch and a quarter strips, it's just a great starting point. Back in the old days they would have done crazy patchwork um, using scraps and pieces of whatever they had. But when you're doing a workshop it's always, or a class, it's always good to have some kind of starting point. Okay, so same thing again. 
if you need to unpick back a little bit unpick those stitches and trimming like that flipping over like that okay so this is our next edge here and I'm going to just get another strip of fabric this is where it gets a bit tricky these are my last two and I want to try and keep everything looking quite different so if I put that there I'm going to have two oranges together so I might actually go back and um, I might do a light yellow there I've actually done that one there but that's okay so I'm going to this time because I can see that edge I'm going to take this strip and I'm going to run it along that edge extend it up into this strip here but I am going to just take it on a little bit of an angle just so that I don't end up with all one inch and a quarter strips and I'm stitching along all the way along and just stopping there like that and the reason why we use that stitch length of two is because it's um, not going to come apart because we're not doing that little back tack or anything like I mentioned. I'll turn that around so you can see that a little bit better. So just unpicking back a little bit just so that I can get in there and trim everything off. And I'll just hold that up to the camera and I'm trimming everything off there so that it's level with the last strip that I sewed. Once again, the reason why we do that is so that we don't end up having lots of bulk in our crazy patchwork. We just want to end up with quarter inch seams. Okay, so spinning around there. Um, our next edge that we're going to sew on, so you can see we've done that one, we've done that one. This was our piece number three. So um, I might, you can go back to the order and keep trying to sew them in order. Um, I'm going to, I haven't used this orange one here yet. So what I'm going to do is, it, this time I'm going to take this edge and I'm putting it there just so I know the angle and then I'm just going to move it, tilt it slightly. And you can see when we, when we move that back we're having all these really interesting shapes in there. And then we're going to do the same thing again. If we need to unpick anything we're going to do that. And then we're going to cut, trimming away anything so that it's all level with our strip and flipping that over like that. So it's really starting to get quite interesting now. Okay, so our next edge, so we've just done um, this one, so this is our next edge. We're going to turn that like that, um, get another fabric. I said you can try working an order but every now and then it's just not going to really work out for you so um, I'm just going to count on one two three four so I'm on to my fourth edge now which is that one I'm going to just line that up but then I'm just going to take it and tilt that a little bit And basically what we're going to do, we're just going to keep working around until we've actually covered our circle.
Okay, so we've covered our circle with Crazy Patchwork. The next step is to flip it over to the other side and that's why we marked our circle on the other side so that we can see it. What you're going to do now is give it a good press and then stitch just inside the marked line. So not on the marked line, just inside and um, just using the same thread and it's about an eighth of an inch or a couple of millimeters inside that line. So here's our marked line and we're going to stitch about an eighth of an inch or about three millimeters inside. Any tricks for sewing around a circle? Just when you're sewing around a circle, just sew nice and slow when you feel that you need to stop and lift the foot to pivot. That's all you need to do. What this is doing is just holding down all the outer edges, ready to put the bias edging on. So now we've stitched around the edge on this side, we're now going to cut it out, cutting exactly on our marked line. And there's our crazy patchwork moon or sun and doesn't that look great? So next step we're going to go over to the cutting mat and I'm going to show you how to cut the bias edging. Okay so for our bias edging I'm going to use a piece of fabric so this is our 25 centimeter piece and we're going to cut the bias edge from this. So the way that we're going to do that is um, here's my selvage and I'm going to take my selvage edge and I'm going to fold it like that to make a triangle. And then the next thing I'm going to do from there is I'm going to just turn this around so that I have the folded edge there and that's actually on my right side. If you're left-handed it's going to be on your left side and then we're going to cut that edge there. So when you cut a bias edge what that means is the fabric actually stretches and can curve when it's on a bias edge like that. Okay, so we've cut that. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to transfer, being very careful with our fabric, just transfer the trimmed edge over to the left-hand side, opposite if you are left-handed. And we're going to cut, because this is double, so we're actually gonna cut two inch and a quarter bias strips. Now, whilst we have both of those together, we want to cut this to a length of either nine and five, nine and five eighths, and we'll, we'll put this in um, some written instructions for you, nine and five eighths, or it's 24.5 centimeters. So to do this, first of all, I'm just going to, um, just double check that you're going to get your nine and five eighths. So yep, that's plenty there. So I'm just going to trim off one edge like this, we're going to actually join two pieces together and I could have actually joined this on the bias but I wanted to make it really easy for everyone so we're just going to do straight joins. Trim to my edge, flipping that over so I've got my straight edge on the left side. As I 
said, working opposite if you are left-handed, and nine and five eighths. So this includes seam allowance. And so there's my nine and there's my five eighths, just a little bit bigger than nine and a half. And I'm going to cut that there. Okay, so now we're just going to go back over to the sewing machine and I'm going to show you how to join this together and sew it onto our circle. Okay, so I've got my two bias strips here and just make sure that you've got your fabrics right sides together like that and we're just going to join both opposite ends. So we're just going to, with a quarter inch seam allowance, so I'm using my quarter inch foot there. If you don't have a quarter inch foot, you really do need to be quite accurate with this. So um, use a ruler and mark your quarter inch seam allowance just lightly onto the fabric. Good idea to do a little reverse at the beginning and at the end this time, so that it doesn't separate while we're trying to sew it. And now flipping around to the other side. next step from there is what we're going to do is we're going to just press our seams open like that same here like that and now we're going to press it in half like this okay so we have pressed our bias in half now so we've got the wrong sides together and the right side on the outside what we want to do now is we want to locate our halfway and our center points so to do that what we're going to do is we're going to take one seam and we're going to put it right sides or just line it up with our other seam and then we're going to find our halfway point here and we're just going to pop a pin in like that and then we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side and pop a pin in like that. Just try and make sure that the um, raw edges are nice and level, that's quite important. There we are, so we've now got our we already know our seams are going to be our halfway points and then we've got our quarter points here with the pin. We want to do the same thing to the circle, so just wherever, fold the circle in half like that. And pop the pins in on the opposite folded edge there, like that. Bring those two pins together and then the same thing again. Popping our pins in there like that. And the same thing again. Like that. There we are. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our bias edge, we're going to take the raw edge and we're going to line it up with a pin on one side so we'll just take one pin out and put the other pin in like that and we're going to do that to all of our edges so align a seam with a pin and we're going to do that and keep working around I'm sure you're all surprised that we're doing our bias like this um, sometimes I like to use the bias makers but I thought this was just an easy way. Not everybody's got a bias maker, so anybody can do this kind of bias work. All right, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to um, ease that in around the edge. And so you can just continue popping your pins in around like that. And because we've cut our fabric on the bias, you can see we get a really nice curve with this. It should be just fitting nicely if you do find um, maybe your fabric is um, has a lot more stretch in it than what my fabric does. You may have to um, readjust with your seams. If you find that um, for some reason it's too tight, you may have to just recut your bias again and um, add a little bit of extra, make it a little bit longer. We really don't want it to be too tight, we just want it fitting nicely. 
and the reason for that is that um, when this edge folds out that's going to fold out we want that to sit nicely around the edge and not be too tight lots of pins means it's going to fit nicely you won't have to be doing any unpicking there and our last quarter okay so what we're going to do now that we're all pinned we're going to stitch around the edge with a quarter inch seam allowance so if you don't have a quarter inch foot um, I do recommend just going along with your tape measure and making little marks so that you can get the exact quarter inch seam so let's go we're just going to sew around the edge So just take the pins out as you get to it and also one of these little tailors awls to help you make sure that the edges, the raw edges are staying nice and level. so you can see what's going to happen that's going to fold over there like that beautifully so one little thing I'll get you to do and that is to just trim the seam allowance just trim it slightly and make sure that when you're sewing this on you are taking a scant quarter inch seam allowance try not to take anything that's too wide you want to take those correct seam allowances and as you see, see, I'm just trimming a little bit off there. Okay, so let's go back to the cutting mat and then I'm going to show you how we're going to put this on. Okay, so this is what we're up to now. So if you just use your iron to press that edge over like that. And you want that to just want to bend out nicely. We don't want any pressure, you don't want it too tight, but you just want that to just nicely curl over like that. Okay, so the next step now is to apply that onto our block. What you do is just use some scraps of fusible web. Had some little square pieces here. And I'm just going to pop these at random little places. Maybe about five pieces is enough. It's just to hold it in place for us. Okay, and then we're just going to peel away the paper backing, leaving our glue. So once we've peeled off the paper backing from the fusible web, we're going to now iron that onto our block. So you can see where we marked our circle and we just want to just try and put that there. Um, try and leave about a half inch gap between the circle, the bias edge and the wings there. And then we're just going to iron that into place just to hold it down. Now, be careful if you do have a bit of um, black on your iron from the glue, 
this is where it's going to leave some marks so um, probably use some baking paper or an applique mat just to protect your fabric there okay so we're on like that now the next step is to stitch this on so the way we're going to stitch this on is you can either use a blanket stitch like you did when you did the blanket stitch around the edge or you can use your zigzag stitch but we don't want to um, use a really small zigzag um, or tight one and I'm just going to show you on the sample here like this just a zigzag where it's quite um, open so on this one here I've actually used a width of 1.5 and a length of two and when I've stitched that on I've used a matching color thread or you can use a contrasting thread to make um, a feature of it and it's just the same zigzag I showed you last week we've got um, one stitch out one in one out one in one out one in like that so to stitch around the edge of your bias shape I recommend either using a blanket stitch so if you're doing blanket stitch applique just use a blanket stitch in a matching colored thread or you may even want to use um, a contrasting thread but um, if you don't have a blanket stitch um, it's fine to do a little zigzag stitch so just to show you what I'm doing there is I've got um, a matching colored thread on I have set my width to 1.5 which is actually quite narrow and a length of two so it's um, a little bit longer than what we were actually doing our zigzag around the edge so what we're going to do is um, we're going to use our open toe foot. Um, if you don't have an open toe foot, that's okay, but just center the edge of your bias on your foot there. And we're going to start sewing. I've just got a little tie up happening there, but if you don't have your long threads that will pull through and it's like one stitch in, one stitch out. This makes quite an um, invisible little stitch. As you're sewing around a circle, a lot of times you're going to find that you're going to need to um, stop the needle in the down position, so on the outside edge only, and pivoting like that. And so you can see I'm just using my little tailor's all here. That always helps me to just stitch around the edge. Like say for instance, if my bias at one point in time I needed to hold it flat, I would just like very carefully hold it there so I could stitch around the edge. And so just continue sewing that on to finish off. Either use a tie off on your machine if it's secure or leave long threads. So here we are, we've got our bias stitched down around the outside edge and we should have at this point in time had our little stitching around our applique. Um, let's pretend that's done though. So what we're going to do now, we're going to layer it together for quilting. So this is where we're going to have our background square, we're going to make our quilt sandwich, making sure that our solid edge is going to be running straight down like this. There's our batting, um, scrim to the top edge and then we're going to put our piece on top like that and once again straight edges all running in the same, so the straight grain all running in the same direction like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to safety pin it together ready for quilting just like we did last week. So I'm just going to show you our finished block here on our dark background and talk about just remind you about the quilting. So first of all what we're going to do is we're going to stitch around the outside edge so outlining our shapes nice and close to the edge using a matching color thread, a thread that matches our background and also use that same color thread on the, the bobbin also so we don't have any tension problems. Once we've done that 
um, we are then going to um, just sort of do a bit of stitching on the crazy patchwork here and the way I did this I didn't stitch in every seam I used a thread that kind of blended in so this one here I've got quite pastel colors so I used a pastel lemon and I just started stitching and I just kept following around and around and around and around as I said didn't stitch in every seam just a couple of seams here and there and then I did stitch around the inner outside edge using that same kind of pastel colored thread if you um, are using a dark thread in the bobbin you just have to reduce the top tension so that you don't end up having the dark thread coming through the top so it can always be a problem but just have a little bit of a practice reducing the top tension down once we've done all of our outline quilting next step is to do our, um, our echo quilting so that's where we're stitching a quarter of an inch away from the edge now if you find that your walking foot is a little bit too wide and it's um, kind of getting in the way of um, sewing that quarter inch, why don't you mark it? So sometimes that's what I do because my walking foot's quite wide on my machine so I actually just mark it around and then I can follow that and stitch that. Just making sure you're using a fabric marker that can be easily erased from your fabric. So we've outlined the bird, um, we've done the echo quilt around all of the stars, one big echo quilt around the edge of the moon and then just like what I showed you last time wherever you feel that it's going to be a little bit puffy mark that little cross um, so just here and there you can follow our picture and you can kind of make sure that they're sort of in the same place don't have to be exactly in the same place and then do those little um, crosses there that look like our stars so that's block two finished we really hope you enjoyed learning about crazy patchwork next week we'll have another technique for you so we'll see you then have a great week everyone bye now